Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing an analysis and valuation of Amgen Inc. Let's get started. So who is Amgen? They're a pharmaceutical company and here's basically an overview of just how big they are. They have an $147 billion market cap. They have 27 products, 11 million patients served in over 100 countries. They have 24,000 employees. They have $9 billion of free cash flow. They're a big company, at least within the pharmaceutical sector. And here are some of the sort of conditions that they treat with their products, right? They treat a whole lot of severe conditions and they treat them for the long term too. They treat stuff like melanoma, cancer, heart attacks, strokes, obesity, severe asthma, Crohn's disease, and more. And here are the name brands that are produced by Amgen that treat all of these particular conditions. So they have a lot of brands, they have a lot going on, and let's talk a little bit about their financials at once. And here you can see, I actually think their annual report is pretty great. Because if you're that kind of person that wants to dwell really deep into the individual products of these pharma companies, you can see the sort of breakdown of all the different products they have and the revenue and how that has changed over the years. For example, you can see that Enbrel has actually decreased in the total revenue it's giving, but maybe other drugs have increased slightly. So it's interesting to break these things down as well as track other products that are coming in the pipeline and good on management to have this or good on the accounting team rather to have this on the annual report because you can get a really good overview. But here is something that Amgen always does, which is that they have a pretty decent dividend. They right now yield, I want to say about 3%. They said they return $9 billion to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. And this is relative to 2022 but they increased their 2021 dividend by 10% versus 2020. They did another increase from 2021 to 2022. So yeah, they clearly are prioritizing increasing and paying this dividend over time. And here is their income statement. Essentially, we're seeing that their total revenues are growing a tiny bit. Their operating expenses are staying pretty flat, which is really interesting. Uh, usually with pharma companies, you see the research and development growing, growing, growing. Here it's also staying decently flat. And you also notice that the numbers are pretty consistent even throughout 2020, because even in a complicated global situation, people still need their medication, of course. And you'll also see that the net income is a little spotty. In 2020, they actually had a good year. In 2021, not so much. And in 2022, it's a partial recovery. So... That'll be interesting to track, basically, just to see if they finish recovering in the way they do. And here's their statement of cash flows. I want to also bring attention to the free cash flow, right? Which essentially is the cash from operations that you see here, which is the addition of all of this. You can probably take away stock-based compensation. Thankfully, it's a very, very small fraction of their cash from operations. This is actually an expense. It's not really part of the cash flow. And then you would subtract the um, capital expenditures, which would be this line, the purchases of property, plant, and equipment. So here would be their capital expenditures, which are actually pretty low. So free cash flow is pretty consistent, though it has been decreasing a little bit over the years. You'll also see that they are paying now cash for acquisitions. They're acquiring other companies. They paid $2.5 billion and $3.8 billion in these last couple of years to acquire other companies and what I assume is their products that they can add to the roster of all these different drugs and medicines that they're offering, right? And here's their guidance. For revenue, they're telling us is going to be between 26 and $27.2 billion, a pretty large range, but compared to this last revenue over here of $26.3 billion, it's not a very large rate of growth, and we'll see that there's not a large rate of growth between any of these numbers from 2020 to 21, from 21 to 22. So that's about in line. Revenue does grow for Amgen. It just doesn't seem to grow at this absolutely massive rate. And the capital expenditures will be about $925 million, which is also in line with what it was the previous year. So we can use that to estimate free cash flow. And I'm going to predict free cash flow. Here's the thing. 
Here's revenues from 2018 to 2022, right? With that slight increase that we've seen over the years on average, right? Well, here's free cash flow to equity. You see the overall trend is actually down and this is a little bit concerning and this is essentially the percentage of revenue that gets turned to free cash flow each year and that's also decreased from let's say let's ignore this 44 percent let's just say that was an outlier but even then you have these numbers in the high 30s and now you're in the low 30s so there's an average of 37.1 percent of this free cash or of revenue getting turned to free cash flow but this has been decreasing and this is a little bit concerning so I am going to say that in the future, actually, it's going to be 33% of revenue that gets turned to free cash flow. I'm going to be conservative in my estimation because I would have to see that the free cash flow margin is growing in order to give them that average number, right? Because the overall trend has been down over the years and the overall trend of free cash flow has also been down a little bit over the years. So this is something just to note, right? When margins are decreasing, this is something to take a big note of. And we can do a discounted cash flow model with this. What am I doing here? I am basically saying that from 2023 onwards, and then in perpetuity, they're growing 2%. I'm saying that their free cash flow is going to grow 2% relative to 2022, all the way through 2026. And I'm giving them a perpetual growth rate of 2%. So I'm just saying Amgen's going to grow by 2% for all of eternity, essentially. And I'm going to give it a required rate of return of 11%. I do this with all the models I do simply because I want it to beat the market by 1% per year. And with that, divided by the total number of shares out, we get a fair value of $184.26. But they have a fair bit of debt. So we have to subtract that from the total value. And with debt included, we get a fair value of $128.04. Now... Where's Amgen's price? And we'll see that compared to these $124, it is nowhere near. And we'll see here that Amgen has not been the greatest performer over the past five years. This may be a factor of overvaluation, maybe. If a stock is clinically overvalued, maybe its returns over time are not going to be as great as stocks that are undervalued relative to their intrinsic value, right? But yeah, we'll also see that right now, at least on paper, it has a lower range of PE value, especially compared to this in the trading in the 270s, 280s. And it does have a pretty chunky dividend yield of almost 4%, which it does seem committed to giving you and to uh, keeping and growing, which is good to see. But we are seeing that the stock price is a little bit far from the fair value that I am giving it with that growth rate of 2% in perpetuity. Now, if you want to get near the value it is right now, you would actually have to sort of settle with a return of 8% instead of 11%. That is 3% per year less, which over the course of years does matter, you know? So here I would get a fair value of $220 with seven and 17 cents with net debt included, which is very different. And if you're comfortable with this, it is a lower risk profile and you would expect lower returns for taking less risk because Amgen is a pretty big and reliable company. But yeah, you either would have to do your own model with higher growth rates or a lower rate of return. And that is the way you would get something closer to the fair value of Amgen right now or to the, to the actual real value of Amgen right now. So yeah, this is just something showing you the sacrifice you would have to make if you're owning Amgen, right? And I also have to mention that they're acquiring Horizon Therapeutics, which, or they're at least attempting to. It seems that these news articles are saying that the FTC is looking to block Amgen's $27.8 billion deal for Horizon Therapeutics. Now, they are a $116.14 billion company, so this will be big. This will add almost a fifth more to their portfolio and uh, at least to their market cap. And it will add a bunch of stuff to their portfolio, a bunch of revenue, a bunch of net income. So this prediction does not include any of what Horizon Therapeutics would add. That would change the mix a little bit, but it's important to note. And of course, to acquire Horizon Therapeutics, 
they took out a bunch of debt in order to do that. They took about a, they took out about thirty billion dollars in debt, a little more than this. I assume the rest is to just settle legal fees and whatnot. But yeah, this is interesting. It's something that if you own Amgen, you're going to have to take a look at. You're going to have to track over time because we don't know if it's going to happen. We don't know how the market is going to react if it goes through or does not go through, right? So that's just something to note. But because there's no concrete knowledge of whether or not Horizon Therapeutics will be acquired, I'm only mentioning it in passing. And so now I'm going to give you two possible stories for Amgen. One of them is that Amgen's margins, the free cash flow margins, the net income margins, recover to previous levels. This would buoy the total level of free cash flow and net income, despite the revenue growth maybe not being that stellar. So free cash flow growth would actually be larger than projected, and maybe it could just be really good revenue growth and really good free cash flow that comes with it. But in general, you would have to see a growth in general of free cash flow somehow, either through larger revenue growth or through improving margins or both. And now, if the Horizon acquisition is painless and brings further growth, if these products that Horizon has bring, instead of that 2% growth rate, a 5% growth rate, that's also something worth looking at. Combined with a healthy dividend of almost 4% and a lot of share buybacks, Amgen could be a very nice holding. If this thesis is true, Amgen could be fairly valued or even a little bit undervalued. The other narrative could be, that Amgen keeps growing at that 2% rate over time pretty steadily. It stays steady and reliable, but valuation will decide when there is a good entry point. Those who hold it now may have to rely solely on the dividend and buybacks in order to get a market beating rate of return. Essentially, you'd be getting that 8% per year, at least in the stock price appreciation, but then you would be getting that extra 4% or maybe a little more in the share buybacks. But you would have to rely on that happening. And if this is the case, Amgen is a quality company that is overvalued, at least in these absolute terms of the model. So I just have to point out that downturns don't always mean value. Amgen's share price has dropped a lot recently. And despite this, it's important to note that just because a stock has dropped recently, it doesn't mean it is necessarily good value. I'm not saying this of Amgen in particular, I'm saying this of many stocks. Many stocks drop from severe overvaluation to mild overvaluation, and some stocks that have been going up a lot lately can still be undervalued, especially if the revenue, the free cash flow, the net income has been growing at a much larger rate than the stock price itself. So with that said, I hope you found this analysis useful, it was a pleasure to make it, and if you have any stocks you want me to analyze, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to take a look. And if it's interesting, I'll make a video of it. And if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you know when I post a new video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.